it is. Broadcasting the boasterous part of the fastest game in the world. So strap on your lids and lace them up, Rook. You're listening to the Barn Troopers Hockey Podcast. Take a lap! Clap it up, boys! Clap it up! Here we are. Here we Here are. We are. Two games into the Stanley Cup Finals in Hulkster. I tell you what. Wow. Uh, wow, thumbs up. Wow, thumbs down. Or wow, what the hell is going on? Um, well, I mean, going back to let's let's just let's get into this. You know what I mean? We yeah. talked about last week about you know Vegas just being a wagon. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, they're really just showing that they're a freaking wagon. They're yeah. a hell of a team. Yep. Um, Aiden Hill is playing. Aiden Hill is is a decent goaltender. He is playing one to two levels up of what his actual ability is, though. Hundred percent, one hundred percent. He is a solid goaltender, but he is playing a couple levels up right now. So, you know, the the let's get right into game one. Um, you know, the Panthers end up losing uh, five to two. Boof. But um, I mean, really, those goals were were essentially just mistakes that are that could probably be be fixed, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not necessarily going in in the order here, but. Duclair was was the reason for two goals. One, Petrangelo danced and dangled all over him on the blue line, and he lost him, and that shot from the point went in. Okay, so that's Duclair, right? So that's one mm-hmm. goal. He was totally screening Bob on a second goal, Duclair was. And, you know, any goaltender, whether it's Bob, Aiden Hill, any even Vasilevsky, right? Any goaltender, if, they're, if they can't see the puck, it's going to be real difficult to stop it, right? So right. there's two goals. Our boy Maddie Kaklutch does a weak, a weak uh, kind of flip in the defensive zone up to the middle, and something for anybody that's never played hockey before. One thing you learn at the very basic fundamentals of day one in hockey: never try to never clear the puck in the middle of the ice, <laughs> mm-hmm. especially in your own zone. Mm-hmm. And to that point, real quick, I'm going to make this about myself. Real quick, uh, I played goalie growing up my whole entire life. And there, I can remember this one specific game. We were getting destroyed. It doesn't even matter the score, but the puck was behind the net. Somebody passed it out front. And my buddy, actually, he was trying to clear it and get it out. But he essentially took a one-timer from behind the net and one-timed it in, in our net. Oh, no. <laughs> because the pass went out in the like, middle of the ice, right? Yeah. So, I mean, anyway, this is like peewees. But anyway, the point being... You never clear the puck out front, especially in your defensive zone. Maddie Kaklutch, our boy, weak, weak, uh, up, up, uh, kind of lifted it up, and Mark Stone, great hand-eye coordination, knocks it down and, and puts it in the back of that. So that's three goals right there, right? Um, mm-hmm. And I don't necessarily think the fourth goal might have been might have been a solid one. I don't remember exactly, but then that fifth one, fifth one was an empty net. So, you know, really, it wasn't. A terrible game one. Obviously, the, the Cats did lose, but they played better in game one than they did in game two. Game yeah. two, God bless. Game two, I mean, bro, bro. Well, Seven to two um, is is not good. But no. I, I do I do want to actually touch on game one again real quick. Um, so game one, like Aiden Hill made the save. Aiden Hill made essentially, this is actually kind of a fun fact. The exact paddle save that Aiden Hill made in game one is on the same end of the ice that was made in game two of the 2018 Stanley Cup Finals when Braden Holtby made the same paddle save on Ryan Reeves, which was deemed the save, right? Right. And essentially back then in 2018, that was that save essentially propelled the momentum of the Capitals winning the Stanley Cup uh, in, that, in that series. That was like... They were down that big save, then they made a comeback, and then they won the next four. Um, so this is game one. The Hill did that. I'm not necessarily saying that that's going to make the Vegas Golden Knights win the cup. I will say, watching that though, I was like, "Holy crap, dude!" Like that's a huge moment, though. Yeah. So it's already as strong as Vegas, as we saw in game one. He makes that amazing save. Like it's kind of one of those just 
if I'm the Florida Panthers, I'm like, damn, we can't do fuck all. Yeah. <laughs> like, what are we yeah. Do with that, you know? Um, so yeah, game one though, wasn't, wasn't terrible for, for the Panthers. Um, do you have any, any thoughts on uh, game one? Uh, I, th- at w- one point, doesn't, doesn't, uh, Kachuk get a game misconduct in one as well? I know yeah. he didn't in two, but didn't he get a game misconduct in one? He got, he got a game misconduct in one and he got two in game two. Yeah. Two and two. Um, yeah, that's right. I'm not actually even sure. And, and I do want to touch on, on that too, with, with the refs. Um, I'm not even really sure exactly. Uh, I'm trying to look, look back right now as we're talking why he got a game. It was like four minutes left in the third period, something like that, um, that he got a game misconduct. Um, but yeah, I, I think, you know, I, I think overall since the conference finals, the refs have done pretty well with just letting the boys play. Mm-hmm. I feel like, and you know, with this entire playoffs, I would say, honestly, I've watched 75% of every game that's been played since the first puck drop in this playoffs. Mm-hmm. I'll say a good solid 75%. The other 25% I've watched the you know YouTube game highlights. So I've seen every single game, right? And I feel like in those first two rounds, man, the refs had the whistles out a lot. They seemed like they were calling mm-hmm. a lot of penalties and, and whatnot. I feel like in the conference finals, though, they let them play pretty well. And so seeing game one, uh, you know, like they, there was a lot of penalties being called, right? There was seven power plays for the Vegas Golden Knights. There was 10 mm-hmm. power plays overall, three calls for the Panthers, seven calls for the, for the Knights. And I'm not saying this as like, oh, the refs cost the game. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying, like, let them play. Especially the, in the cup, man. It's the Come Stanley on. Stanley Cup finals, right? And there's – this is a whole conversation that we can have uh, with, with, with calls and whatnot. But at the end of the day, I just feel like you got to let them play. There was less penalties called uh, by two. There was eight penalties in total called um, in game two, but you, I feel like you just got to let them play, let them play. And, you know, it just, I don't, I don't really know. Other than that, like you have to let them play. I feel like, yeah, you have to call those, egregious penalties, you know, a, a, a blatant slash, a blatant uh, interference, you know, like there was one um, in game two, I forget who it was. It was a Vegas guy. He essentially just came in and, and checked um, a Florida guy entering the zone. I don't remember who it was, but total interference. Like you have to call those, you have to make those calls. Right. Mm-hmm. But in these two games, I feel like there was not, there was like some after the whistle things, but they just started throwing guys out. Game misconduct, 10 minute or 10 minute. A 10, you get a 10, you get a 10, you get a 10. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, that's what I saw. It was, wasn't was one of um, Kachuk's game misconducts to hit on Eichel? Uh, so it wasn't, they didn't call the game, the, the 10 minute misconduct on the hit on Eichel. The hit was a clean hit. What they called it was him and Barbashev after the whistle uh, doing whatever they were doing because okay. of the hit on Eichel. But I mean, that was a, I mean, speaking of that, that was a clean hit. Like mm-hmm. it looks, it looked terrible, but Eichel essentially toe picked and tripped in like as he's entering or coming out of the zone and it was shoulder to shoulder. Um, and you can even see, and thankfully, you know, Jack Eichel, he essentially saw it coming and turned his head. So mm-hmm. he didn't get that head contact. If he did have that head contact, Kachuk probably would have gotten called for that just because of the head. But I mean, he tripped into Kachuk legit. Like you can mm-hmm. see it in slow motion that he, he toe picked. But um, so yeah, it was the after the whistle stuff between Kachuk and Barbashev, why he got a 10. Um, and then he got another 10 at the end of the game for, again, after the whistle stuff. And mm-hmm. I don't know, man. Like, again, you're broadcasting these the Santa Cup finals on TNT and TBS simultaneously at the same time. Because I know that because I was recording on, on Sling or whatever, right? And mm-hmm. I have two recordings of the same thing because they had it on TBS and TNT. And to me, while we're a hockey, we're hockey fans and, you know, we know the game, but a casual fan, like if you see that, why wouldn't you want to see some, some scrapping after the whistle? Yeah. Well, it's for the Stanley cup. This is a, this is the biggest championship in sports that they I mean, care about it. Let's see that they care about it, that they want to win. And they're just, they're just tossing guys. And, yeah. you know, I, I, to that same point, I get the point of trying to maintain order in the game. So that mm-hmm. way things don't get out of hand. 
but you literally aren't even letting anything. Like you're just like, nope, you guys, oh, you guys are scuffing. You get a you get a roughing, you get a roughing, you get a 10, you get a 10, everybody out of here. The I don't like it. How's I, the game gonna grow? Like people, I, there's eyeballs on it for once. <laughs> I, I I don't I don't like it. So again, I'm not saying that the refs did had any sway with with the game i'm not saying that at all like oh the refs won the game i'm not saying that i'm just saying let them fucking play Mm -hmm. let them play again you can and this is why i think when i made that mention of like the conference finals where i think they did a really good job there was a lot of after the whistle scrums happening a lot of scrapping and they generally just broke it up and let them and no penalties were given out and then every once in a while, as it got, you know, there might they might take one or two guys have a coincidental, but uh, yeah, these first two games, they're just there's there's no after the whistle stuff, and dude, that's it's part of the game. Number one and number two, it's the Stanley Cup Finals. Let them let them scrap. Let them scrap. Let scrap, man. Uh, Hashtag let them scrap. Yeah, uh, and here's the other thing. So uh, Vegas whoops them in game two, seven two, right? Yeah. Uh, up to nothing. Sure did. Um, so do you think that this that Florida putting Carolina away so fast is is showing here, or is this more just what I tend to think? Uh, Vegas is just showing that they're the superior team. Um, I mean, I think there's a little bit of both. Obviously, as we said on the show, Vegas is showing that they are a hell of a team. Number one, there's no question about that. I do feel like putting away Carolina so fast and essentially, you know, yeah. While there was those three overtime games and they were, it was a hard fought series, but it was a sweep. Um, I feel like it was kind of just a little too easy for Florida, Mm -hmm. especially coming from Boston and Toronto. So I think there's a little bit of that extra rest didn't help them. And I feel like Carolina not being much of a challenge for them hurt them as well because Obviously, as we've seen, they've dropped two now to Vegas, who is a really great team. So, uh, and while they got essentially blown out in those two games, 5-2 and now 7-2, but let's not forget, there was a lot of goals scored in that Boston series as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? They, they lost 3-1, they won 6-3, they lost 4-2, lost 6-2, and then one, four, three, seven, five, and four, three. That was a lot of goals scored in that series. So they can do it, and I mean they're they're headed home tomorrow. Yeah. Um. You know we'll we'll have a better picture. You know tomorrow where we are here. I I still can't count them out until Vegas has won four. Yeah. yeah. Because that, like we mentioned before, like the they come back from three one against Boston. So it's I agree. I agree. Until it happens, I uh, you can't, I can't count them out. Not looking good so far. So we'll we'll have a better picture tomorrow night. Yeah, it's it's, it's kind of my final thoughts, and it's not it's looking, looking good, good but, but I'm not worried about it. I think they definitely obviously got their asses handed to them, so it's kind of a wake up call. Like, what are you going to do now in game three? That's the most important part. They have to score. They should definitely score first. They have to score first. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. Keep the momentum on their side. Keep the barn on their side. Uh, and then don't take penalties because especially now while we're saying hashtag let them scrap, you know that they're calling these things yes. and easily giving mixed conduct. So mm-hmm. you have to reel in a little bit, you know, even though, even though that they're the Florida Panthers game is to be physical and to get under their skin. Um, that's Maddie Kaklutch's game, right? Uh, but you got to be careful about it. You, you know now what they're going to call everything yep so <laughs> now you just have to take the talent and, and put the puck on the net because they had a lot of opportunities in game two and yeah Aiden Hill was 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 pretty solid but but they they did get through a couple of times so they just need to uh get the puck in the net first <laughs> and that'll be a, a big thing but uh yeah I'm not I'm not worried but you can't get down three you can't like it's I mean like like I said it they've done it already but you don't want to do that like why why you, you've got to go back to your barn and you got to win one you have you have to take this one and i do and actually have one other thing to say about game two too there was, there was a couple, a couple of times where they left guys, guys wide, wide open, open. Like, like jonathan jonathan, 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 jonathan marshall 
was left wide, wide open in the slot, slot and he and scored. He scored. He's, He's just, just there for like five, five seconds. seconds. He gets mm-hmm. the pass, pass from Michael, goes, goes back, back, and back and forth, forehand, backhand, bloop, bloop, glove side over the line. Uh, what, are what are you doing? doing? You know, you can't leave, you can't leave guys, guys wide, wide open. open. It's the cup, man. It's the cup. All right, so before we move on, though, I want to bring this up because – we talk a lot about yes, we are we love the sport, we love the NHL, sure do, sure uh, do. but they always get in their way. And to your point about the refs, um, you have you have Maddie K- uh, you have Maddie Kachuk fall into your lap, like have this star this breakout season where he has become the face of the playoffs this year. Yep, yep, yep. and you're doing everything you can to get him off the ice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, not smart. Uh, I, should I should have pulled, have pulled that up while I, while I had the stats, stats up, up, but I do remember seeing a graphic that, that he had uh, 50, 50 penalty, penalty minutes the entire, entire playoffs, playoffs. Mm-hmm. And, and just 26, 26 of those in the, in the first, first two games, games of the finals. finals. 26. 26. Wow. So, so, and then that last that misconduct, so he's up, he's up to uh, uh, 60, 60 penalty mm-hmm. minutes. A full a game. game. Wow. In the penalty penalty box. Box. Mm. You just getting getting in getting in your own way. You have a you have you have a guy. That's all I'm saying. You have um, a guy, yeah. Uh, Philly might have a guy. <laughs> you think? Do they? <laughs> Do they have a guy? I wish Corey was here to uh, talk about his team. Yeah. So I, you know what? We'll we'll dive into like the this this is a pretty big trade. Uh, I like Philly here. I like what they get in return. Um, they dish off. Proverov to Columbus. Um, they just dish off. I know Connaughton. They, they should diff out, dish off Proverov to the trash and just seriously. never sign that piece of shit. But seriously, anyway. but yeah, that's that's a conversation for a different day. Yep. Um, Connaughton goes to L.A. I don't. I think Hodgson is their guy. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, but I'm not. I'm not familiar with either of those guys. I know Provi and I know Connaughton are both. We're both flyers, and so they're both clearing out. Um, Philly gets Cal Peterson, which, you know, we gave some shit to Corey about because, oh, you know, oh, this is your guy. Um, here's your guy. Here's but your you guy. never know. He might just – he might end up being the backup. I'm guessing he's the backup because my guess is Hart is on the way out. I forget the kid uh, that they had, but he got a lot of playing time towards the end of the season. I, and... I did see uh, I did see the rumor wire that they were working on – the Flyers were working on a uh, second trade of the day for Carter Hart. So, Yeah. That's likely, I think. Poor kid. <laughs> like he he needs to get out of Philly though. He, he does. needs he needs to. Like he needs a fresh start. Like absolutely. Give give him a position where he can get, you know, uh, 25 to 30 games and get get his confidence back so he can get a starting job in two seasons. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but so Philly acquires Cal Peterson, Sean Walker, and Helga Grands. I guess, and the internet loves this Grands kid. Um, I guess he's a defensive prospect uh, okay. that's looked really good, and uh, he might slot right into that blue line um, almost immediately. I can't imagine he's not. He's probably a top six already for them. Oh, I'm so sorry, Corey. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, so I, I, but I, I really, I really like seeing these moves because Philly, much like the Toronto Maple Leafs, mm-hmm. need to go scorched earth. Because yeah. you've had the same pieces in place for years upon years upon years mm-hmm. with no results. Yeah. Matter of fact, in this case, Philly has gotten worse. Way so worse. <laughs> you have John Tortorella. You made the the coaching change. All right. Well, now get rid of get rid of those guys. Yeah. Get rid of any crappy contracts that you have. Get some new faces in there. If you're going to do a true rebuild, do it. Pull do the it. Pl- pull the pull the trigger and freaking do it because. You've literally only gotten worse. So worse. <laughs> you haven't done anything to get better. So this, I like this to actually see some, some moves being made. Like, okay, let's try to get better. I mean, they got, how I, uh, I'm having, what's that? One, two, three, four three draft picks, picks. Three. three, three draft picks. Like yeah. that's huge. Yeah. And this draft class is apparently one of the better ones in the last handful of years since uh, like McDavid's class. So they get um they get Columbus's first rounder from LA, which I think kind of went over to LA in the Corpy trade. I think maybe I don't know. Okay, that sounds yeah, that sounds about right. 
stats and then, and stuff. And then um, Columbus is 24 or 25 second round pick and LA's 24 second round pick to, to, I love this trade for Philly though. I really do. I think yeah, I do too. I mean, I would love to chirp Corey face to face right now um, <laughs> just because it's Philly, but I really, I really enjoy this. I'm, again, I'm glad this is a, a, uh, a compliment uh, with a backhanded com uh, backhanded comment too. I love this for Philly because it's about fucking time yeah. that you, that you realize that you're a uh, terrible team. And you are just at the bottom of the barrel of the league and you're not doing anything to fix it. You bring in a great coach, but you don't change anything else. Like you're stupid. But again, that could go back to former GM and now the new GM, Daniel Briere. So um, mm -hmm. I'm here for it. Like, let's, let's see. I, again, we've talked about this whole playoff, seeing new teams mm -hmm. progressing and getting into the playoffs and doing well. I would love to see more new teams get in and while philly's been there a lot obviously being a caps fan we've lost to the flyers on a handful of uh, uh occasions over my fandom uh but they haven't had a chance in a while so i'm here for it Let, let's see something new i'm here for it too because um the devils and the flyers are never good at the same time anymore that rivalry used to mean something in the 90s right. like we were at each other's throats exactly. and Man, I'd love for that to, you know, you want to talk about chirping. Like, there's going to be some chirping on this pod. Oh, yeah. um, you know, my, my feeling is that very much, very much like New Jersey, and this is what I hope for Corey, this is what I hope for the floor, Flyers, is that uh, next season is kind of like where the Devs were like two, three years ago, where you, you're not going to win a lot of games, but you're going to watch the team go, okay, there's something there. that Like, this is something I can see happening. Right. And yeah. you know, again, look, look where, look what happened with us this this year. Uh, third overall in the NHL, like yeah, it it changed around pretty quick. And again, these these young guys are essentially going to get the opportunity. I would yeah. imagine. I, I I could, you know, pretty much say that they're probably going to get uh, playing time because you know they're they got nothing they're, else. They're they're in a full they're in a full rebuild. If they're actually pulling the trigger on that, um, you know, that's uh, I'm here for it. Let, let's see it. You know what I mean? So um, I'm looking at I'm looking at cap friendly right now to see the because I want to. I mean, again, they could make a lot of moves this off off season, right? So mm -hmm. the Flyers projected cap hit is seventy six million, mm. seventy six point six million. So they have you know about uh, their current cap space is six point eight million. All right. So they got some money to spend. They could bring in some pieces. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's it's not terrible. It's no. Not terrible. They got some money to bring in some guys. So, and they probably, without doing a even deeper dive, they probably have some some uh, contracts that'll be coming off the books, I would imagine. But that's another uh, story for another day, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh. That wasn't supposed to go there yet, but oh, uh, well, here we are. <laughs> here we are. I mean, you know, it 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 makes sense to go here. Um, where is it? So the Blue Jackets obviously just picked up Provy, uh, and they picked up a new coach, Joe. Um, new boy. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, a new another uh, another pick of the hat from the old boys club, Mike Babcock. Why? <laughs> Why? Why? I don't understand. For, for a guy uh, that, I mean, so he was fired as Toronto Maple Leafs head coach in 2019. And there's been numerous, numerous reports that this guy's a piece of shit. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, not essentially, not in the sense of, a, again, this is just the internet. I don't know this guy. I've never been in the room. But players saying like he's mean in the sense not to make you better, but just mean like he's a fucking asshole. Cool. Right. So again, I don't know that I'm not in the room. Right. So that's just reports. That's just reports. Um, but again, like I was, I was looking at this. So, okay. He did win the, the gold for Canada as Canada's head coach uh, in the Olympics. Okay. So he won, 
in Vancouver and he won in uh, Sochi as the head coach for Team Canada. So he has that. But other than that, I mean, he's just taken teams to lose. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In the, and I'm going to go through this real quick. So he coached in the WHL from 1991 to 2000, and he lost every single year. Two years, he didn't even qualify. Every single year, he lost, okay, in the semifinals or the finals, okay? Uh, in the AHL, he coached the Cincinnati Mighty Ducks from 2000 to 2002, lost in the first round. Okay. Then he went to the NHL and he coached the Anaheim Mighty Ducks for two years and lost in the Stanley Cup finals. So he did get to the finals in his first year of coaching, but he lost. And then he missed the playoffs the next year. And then he coached the Wings from 05 to 2015. And he did win one Stanley Cup in 2007, 2008. Every other year he lost. He lost in the quarters. He lost in the finals. He lost in the first round. And then he went to the Maple Leafs in 2015. He <laughs> missed the playoffs his first year. We and then, know. well, we already know the story there. They lost yeah. in the first round for three years. <laughs> uh, he was the coach. So a guy that has won yeah. one yeah. standing up and has yeah. been there yeah. one, two, three times. And yeah. you're yeah. giving yeah. this guy yeah. the opportunity yeah. to coach the Columbus, Columbus Blue Jackets. Blue Jackets. I don't know, man. I, I, that's, I don't like it. I don't like it for many reasons. Um, I don't know. To me, we we were texting back and forth earlier today. Um, there there must be something to Patrick Waugh because, like, he seems like everything I've seen about him, he seems like a nice guy. Yeah, and that might be the kind of guy that Columbus kind of needs. Um, but like, you're you have a piece and a guy who's rapidly declining in line a um and that's about it <laughs> yeah and I'm, uh, who was uh man i'm having a tough time remembering who was winnipeg's coach before uh rick bonus took over do you know offhand no i don't okay i'm gonna look in that real quick uh or if you can look at that while i say this point yep but i remember whoever the coach in winnipeg was like patrick line and him butted heads and then John, John Torrella was, was the coach for Columbus, Columbus for a short time, time. And, and he and Patrick yeah, Line butted heads as well. well. So, so guys, guys that apparently have the same coaching style don't, don't help, help this, this superstar, this specifically, specifically Patrick Line. And maybe, maybe that's a Line thing, thing, but I don't know. I, don't I feel like this team of Columbus, Columbus who's pretty, pretty young, young and they just went through a really shitty season. You need more of a players coach. I feel. I don't think. I don't think bringing the coach is going to be real. Uh, like, like, you know, make you do laps every every uh, practice is going to be the key. I don't necessarily. Not that you shouldn't work hard, of course, but I feel like more of a players coach is going to be a better option here to start with. But what do I know? So Dave Lowry was the coach from twenty twenty two, and then before that it was Paul Maurice from. 14 to 21. Okay. So right. Depending right. on when, but th that was the last. Yeah. Paul Maurice. Yeah. yeah. Freaking Florida Panthers. That's right. That's right. Yeah. 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 Uh, um, to your point, I, yeah, yeah. go ahead. To your point, though, like I, I feel like Babcock is the kind of hire if you're a team that like maybe you just missed the playoffs and you're like your goal is just to get to the playoffs, right? Like, you know, if the, if the devs didn't have, Lindy Ruff this year. I'm not saying I want Babcock, but I'm saying like that's the kind of guy you hire just to get you to that next level. Like let's get in the playoffs, see how we do type of guy. Uh he isn't a let's turn this franchise around type of guy. Yeah, I don't I don't yeah. see that either cuz again, when I just went through his track record like who did he turn around? <laughs> They didn't turn anybody around. No. <laughs> you know nope. like I mean cuz you you made to that point like he was he was the Maple Leafs head coach for three years. Mm -hmm. Didn't do anything with them. They nope. lost in the first round, as we yep. know. As we so, know. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess unless this is a maybe like a short term answer for Columbus, like get Babcock in there and try to 
in implement a new type of system and then you have your actual head coach coming in in a couple of years to yeah. take over from there. I don't know, but I just feel like it's going to be another case of just again the old boys club. Yep. And you're going to you're going to essentially waste uh, a couple of years of that Johnny Gaudreau contract um on a coach that's not going to do anything for them. And again, Patrick Line, I mean uh, honestly, how many years does he have left because he hasn't really done anything. I know he's he's only in like his fifth or sixth year, I think. Yeah. But so he's still very young, but he's Both. essentially just a <laughs> He, he plays he plays on the top line, but uh, he's more like a third fourth line guy uh, with his stats. Anywhere else, he's he's a third liner, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I I'd be interested if if you're a Columbus Blue Jackets fan, how do you feel about the hire? We'd love to hear from you because I, I I have no pulse on on that franchise at all, other than right. you know the few names that that are there. Uh, this just doesn't feel this doesn't feel like it's it's the higher that that they think it is it it really doesn't yeah i don't uh i don't think i don't think it is either i would love to i would love to be proven wrong wrong yeah. honestly like so yeah if you're listening out there and you are in the know with uh columbus please uh let us know is mike babcock a great hire to be your head coach <laughs> Because uh, I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it. <laughs> I, I'm looking at um, I'm looking at the Columbus Blue Jackets roster real quick, and it's a very young team. Okay. The oldest guys are Johnny Gaudreau and Boone Jenner, hmm. and uh, Dan Forth. They're all born in 1993. <laughs> <laughs> man <laughs> yeah those are the oldest guys on the team so or excuse me i'm sorry good branson was born in 1992 okay all right so yeah I oh thought... sorry one more goalie hutchinson whoever the hell he is 1990 that... no idea no idea who that is i feel like i know the name but i don't know the guy <laughs> but yeah um so it's a young team it's a young team i i i don't know man i, I would hope I, I hope it's turned around. I hope, honestly, I hope I'm wrong. And Babcock is, it turns this franchise around because I, I would like to see Columbus do something truly. I just don't I, think this is it. I, it just doesn't, it doesn't, I think they need a lot more than a coach. Uh, so. Patrick Line, I came into the league in 2016, Winnipeg's first round, second overall pick 2016. So, so seven years, seven years. He's still pretty, pretty new in the league, but and um, yet, <laughs> And yet, what two seasons now in Columbus, and pretty well, much nothing since coming over. Technically three, because oh, okay. he came over. He came over in 2020, but so two full seasons in a, and like what, like a half maybe. A yeah. Little, yeah. Well, so he was injured. He was injured. So like he's uh, been he's been injured. Like he played 73 his first year, then 82, 82, uh, 68. He played one game for Winnipeg in 2020. Obviously that was a shortened season. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he played 55 this past season. So he hasn't even played a full season. Wow. <laughs> He's played two full seasons in seven years. 400. Here's, here's the stats real quick. Since we're all kind of on that real quick, 462 games played 198 goals, 181 assists, 379 points total dash 48. This guy is not the not the superstar that he was supposed to be. No, clearly is not. That, is that coaching? Is that the team that's behind him? Is that him? Mm. I don't know. I, my gut feeling says it's a mixture of the first two, but we don't know. <laughs> we don't know. Yeah, we don't know. So, but again, I I guess to kind of cap it off with the Columbus Blue Jackets. Don't understand why Mike Babcock, but um, I mean, I I wouldn't say I'm here for it because I'm not. No. I, I'm I'm interested to see how it how it plays out. I, I would I hope the best for that team because again, I do love to see new squads moving forward and getting you know I don't want to see the same playoffs all the time. I don't want to see the Bruins. I don't want to see the Rangers. 
I don't want to see Carolina anymore. I don't want to see Tampa Bay. Mm. Give me somebody new in the East. Yeah. Um, speaking of somebody and something new, they've done this before, but like a couple quick hits on the way out. Um, yep. Stadium series, Joe. Ooh, in New Jersey. Yeah, man. And they're doing two this year in the same stadium. I like this. This is a great, great, great play by the NHL. For once. Uh, for once. Yeah, why not do a back-to-back? Yeah. Why not have four teams play in this thing? Why and, not? And very smart to have four teams from that area. Yes. Um. So you got the Flyers and Devs, which to me... As you talked about, used to be a huge rivalry. It did. And like for a chance for it to have the uh, spotlight on it, like I love that for this. And, you know... I think that's part of why I was excited to see that Flyers trade is like, okay, maybe this will be something this year and and maybe we can be at each other's throats and they can be a thorn in our side again. You know, you hate, you hate to take the L's, but like you also want the games to be competitive. So for sure. Yeah. 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 I really like this uh, again with the, with double, essentially a double header, two games uh, that weekend is great for the NHL because it's shown that with the stadium series and the winter classic, it's sold out. Yep. Fans come in droves to watch outdoor hockey. So, yeah. like, this is great by the NHL. Thank you, NHL. About For time. Once. For you once. Know, about time. And also, because um, we didn't touch on it, but the um, – what are they calling it? The International Series. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They have, uh, they have essentially a round robin happening. Uh, which is, I think, great as well. I wish we had the graphic for it, but we weren't prepared for that. Sorry, y'all. But uh, that's in that's, and it's not at the beginning of the season either. It's like, I think November. I want to say mm-hmm. November, and they have um, teams that are actually like you would want to see mm-hmm. internationally. If we can stall for like two minutes, I'll find <laughs> the, I'll find the graphic. You got anything else to talk about? Well, the other game in the stadium series is Rags and Isles, and. Uh, both of them were playoff teams this year, so that rivalry is probably heating back up. Um, you know, I mean, you, you know, anytime you get New York New versus New York, yeah, that's, that's it's, great. You know? So, I uh, this this is the first like grand slam home run NHL has done in quite a long time. Um, the stadium series, as you mentioned, clearly just a great concept that that fans are flocking to, but to take it that next step further and do a back to back in New Jersey. And the teams that they chose, the games that they chose to put there, like, I can't say enough. Um, uh, literally, my only complaint is that tickets will not be affordable because I would love to do both of those. That would be yeah, awesome. that's that's definitely the thing with those uh, the outdoor games is they are uh, they are pretty pricey. Mm-hmm. Um, which I mean, I I, I get it. Um, so you either have to find a deal somewhere or scalp the tickets. Uh, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. <laughs> but um, no, I'm, but yeah, that's, it's not necessarily, they got to pay for that stadium somehow. So, yeah. um, okay. I found it. All it's right. The, Glo- the global series in, right. in, in Sweden, 2023, it'll take place at Stockholm, Sweden uh, at the Avicii arena and not the artist. Uh, <laughs> so, and here are the teams, November 16th, Red Wings versus Ottawa senators. Like oh, it. Yeah. Next night, November 17th, Toronto Maple Leafs versus Detroit Red, Red Wings. Mm-hmm. November 18th, the next night, Minnesota Wild versus the Ottawa Senators. Love it. And then on the 19th, the Maple Leafs versus the Minnesota Wild. Love it. So a, a little mini round robin. Like, this is awesome. Detroit Red Wings, Toronto Maple Leafs, Minnesota Wild, Ottawa and Senators. Uh, Ottawa Senators. Like, that's – that's a global series, not mm-hmm. freaking San Jose versus Arizona. <laughs> Nobody yeah. gives a shit about those two teams. Not Sorry, anybody, anybody who's who's uh, fans of those teams. We love their their gear, uh, mm-hmm. but nobody wants to see those two teams play in Sweden or Czechoslovakia or uh, Russia, uh, Germany. Nobody wants to see them play. Nope. Okay? And you got four teams who are either on the up or, you know, in Toronto's case, already playoff teams. Like I, I love it, man. Like Detroit, Detroit has been on the up the last couple seasons. And to your point, you know, in the text thread, they're like three seasons away from being yeah. cup contenders. Ottawa. I said it. Yeah. <laughs> Ottawa is like a piece away. And 
hint, 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 Corey and I are kind of hoping that Carter Hart lands there. Uh, that'd be a good, that'd be a good uh, land for Ottawa to have for sure. Yeah. And I, you know, I don't know if that is the piece that they're missing, but like they got a good young team with, with great veteran leadership and that's where it starts. So, you know, it, it, they didn't do as well as I, I had hoped that they would, but there was times where they looked like the team that they could be. So next I mean, season they, is, it, is, is the time to look for them. Yeah. This past season, I mean, they, they were in the hunt. Mm -hmm. They were in the hunt for, for a playoff push. Um, and they just, you know, kind of blew it towards the end. But um, again, they didn't really, they didn't really have a goal, a tender to uh, win them games. They were kind of uh in between what was the name Mads Soul Garden or something like that, and yeah, Soul Garden, uh, Forsberg, and then yeah, some, yeah, somebody Forsberg. else. Somebody yeah, else. Yeah. There was like somebody else that played there at some point. Because well, Talbot, Talbot's, uh, Talbot's yeah. the number one guy, but he's hurt yeah. again. He's hurt again. Yep. He was hurt again. Yeah. So, but anyway. Uh, and then, uh, did you have more on that, or no? I'm good. All right. So one last thing uh, before we we dip out. Uh, breaking news. Uh, ooh, ooh. Give John Gibson has let the Anaheim Ducks know that he is ready for a change of scenery. I mean, yeah. is is Gibson like some you know goalie that that is going to just put the team on his like put his the team on his back and take you there? No, probably not. But if if your team that's just missing a piece, like you're just missing a goalie, like that's yeah. a big piece. You know what though? Like to that same point. I think, I think that he is still kind of that goalie, to oh, be honest think? with you. Like, okay, so and I say that because so Anaheim got 23 wins this past season. Yeah. Right. right. 23 wins. Probably not all the or probably not all the L's are on him, though. <laughs> not all the L's. But so my point is their goal differential for Anaheim was the worst in the league. Negative dash 129. So 129 goal differential, what was scored on them than what right. they scored, right? But, but with that, with that being said, said, even though those are terrible stats, stats Gibson, Gibson still, still kept them, them in games mm -hmm. that they should not have been even in. in right? Yeah. They had um, twelve OT losses, so they went to overtime a lot. Uh, I feel like their wins mostly came from overtime, so I'd have to actually look at that. But I feel like a lot of Anaheim's games went to overtime. So Gibson, when he played, kept them in those games. So, so I think he is, is he could be that piece mm. to a team that's talented, talented enough to, to actually score, score goals, goals, play defense. Because Gibson's, Gibson's gonna make the stops that he needs to make. make. Yeah. And he's gonna make he's some make stellar, stellar ones too. too. He'll make some he'll make some saves that he's not supposed to make too. So <laughs> I do think that he could, that he could be the be piece to like a devil's a team. team. Uh, uh to, to a Capitals team. <laughs> I mean, if I'm pumping my own gas, um, yeah. you know, like uh, other teams, like like a Montreal would be probably be a good fit for him. Young guys, uh, maybe, maybe not Montreal, Montreal, but like, you, you know, what I'm saying like a Buffalo. Yeah, um, he's, he's he's a he's solid a tender. So I I would love to have him on the Capitals. Yeah, so we'll say. Go but... Yeah, but I, you know what what's what's there? Like you talk yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, more on this at a later time, but um. That uh, that town doesn't seem to really care about the cup that uh, you guys won recently. <laughs> like we went to that barn recently, and uh, more, no on cup that, we found. more on that in the off season. Yeah, but uh, no, nah, dude. Like I, I wholeheartedly agree. I don't think he's, I don't think he's like um like him going to Columbus. Like he's not a savior, but like he is right. Yeah, hundred percent. He is definitely like like it, the Devils or the Caps or like you said. I'm just repeating you. Uh, the That's Sabers. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like if if he goes to one of those teams, like he's definitely a guy that could take them over the top for sure. I think. Um, and he's probably got a good couple years left. And easily, yeah. Depending on you know who you have there behind him, somebody could get some seasoning. I, I really like Buffalo. Now that we talked about it, like a guy like Six K or uh, man, I forget the guy who meditated towards him. uh uh levy levy, levy. Yeah. But that that guy like those guys just need seasoning they just they just need some time and sure. somebody like a, a john gibson buys 6k some time and he doesn't have to leave <laughs> hot take all right if john gibson goes to the oil ooh, 
they could they win the Stanley Cup. Ooh, ooh, I like that. Uh, they would win the Stanley Cup because, well, you know, Soup's got to go. <laughs> I mean, poor guy. But uh, Skinner Skinner had a good rookie season. He did, but like and to your point, Gibson. a guy like Gibson giving him some advice, yeah. playing playing backup to John Gibson, bro. And playing back up to Gibson as opposed to playing back up to soup. <laughs> like what? That's not well, day, really man. truly pay, playing number one to soup. Yeah, you're right. Like, especially towards the end of the season, he definitely won that won, uh, won the net. I, yeah, man. Um, I mean, I, yeah, I, I think I, that's, that's kind of a hot take bold prediction, but if John Gibson went to the Edmonton Oilers, that's the only thing they're missing is a goaltender that can be a goaltender. Right. Yeah. Uh, no, I love, I love that. And then I think soup is still a serviceable goalie. He could go somewhere that, you know, he's, he's probably a number two, but like, I don't know, somebody who just desperately needs one soup could fill that role. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I suppose he could. Soup to your caps. <laughs> Gee, I'm well, I don't know. It can't get any worse than Kemper. So that's right. <laughs> Oh. oh shoot! Um, okay, well that's the bold prediction there. Uh, John Gibson to the Edmonton Oilers. I, I love it. I don't know what the uh, what what the uh, what the cap is and uh, all that, but um, if that happened, watch out. So mm-hmm. I guess we'll, uh, we'll we'll find out. But it, real quick before we leave, Anaheim is another team that very young team, and they have guys mm-hmm. like that are are going to continue to be something. Trevor Zegras. Troy Terry, um, God, who's that? Who's the other kid that I'm thinking of right now? Um, terrible take when I can't think of the name. <laughs> the freaking guy. Uh, who's the other guy with with uh, Zegras? Uh, oh, Com- to- Comtois, uh, McTavish. Um, oh yeah, McTavish. Uh, so yeah, those guys. I mean, some vets too, like like an Adam Henrique. I don't know how much gas he has left in the tank, and Fowler and Shaddenkirk. I mean, they're a couple pieces away for sure, um, but I think they already have they already have the guy that they think can replace Gibson. I, f- I forget the guy who got a lot of the split a lot of the time. Uh, with Stolars. That's right. I think that's their guy. So they got, they got Stolars and Dostal. So, mm-hmm. uh, but anyway, um, yeah, they got a young team. I feel like you know they can. Again, Gibson wants to go, so you're. You're gonna get a pretty good take for Gibson still. He came in the league in 2011, so you know he's got some he's got some years under his belt. But I mean, you know, the guys the guys won 180 games in 431 games played. So like, you know, whatever the math is on that. And think about when was the last time An- Anaheim was any good? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And to that point, he still has a 0.912 save percentage mm. and a 2.83 goals against. That's how pretty, long, solid, pretty solid numbers. How long has he been in Anaheim? It's since 2013. Okay, so his first two years were elsewhere. So yeah, yeah. like well, his first two years were in June or uh, like the AHL, whatever. Okay, he was, so, he was dra- drafted in 2011, and then he his rookie season was 2013, 2014 for Anaheim. So he spent his entire time on an NHL roster yep. with the Anaheim Ducks in a time where they haven't been very good. Correct. So there you go. <laughs> Correct. So I feel bad for the guy. Please go somewhere. That and and, somewhere and again, to, to my to my earlier point, he's been on a Ducks team that has not been great, and yet he still has a below three goals against average and a ninety plus, you know, point nine one two save percentage. Mm. So he's keep up. to my same point. He's kept the Ducks in games that they should not be. In well, there you go, John Kid. I, I want to put the stamp on this. I, I'm repeating Joe's hot take. John Gibson to Edmonton, make it happen. I I, I love that. I I really do. I, I I think that's hot, and I think I think I think seeing Edmonton finally do it, I think would make me happy. Seeing Toronto continue to lose makes me happy. <laughs> seeing Edmonton finally do it would would make me happy. Well, that is a uh, that's a hot take. Uh, stamp it. <laughs> Uh, John, John Gibson, Gibson to the Edmonton Oil. Oil. Why, Why Babcock, though, Columbus? Why Babcock? Dumb. Why Babcock? That's dumb. Uh, hopefully next week we're not talking about another sweep. 
Yeah, please. Uh, hopefully, hopefully we're talking about a series tied at 2-2. Uh, again, I'm going to Florida. I'm going to try to find a bar and watch the games. At, uh, I cannot afford $600 ticket to go to the mm -hmm. finals. Wish I could. Uh, but if there's nothing else, Hulkster, are you good? That's, that's everything. Also, real quick shout out to you, Hulkster, for always putting together the slideshows. And, and whatnot. Uh, we, uh, we thank you for all of your thankless work, but I'm thanking you right now. Oh, why'd you have to do that on air? God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> because I wanted to make you blush. So with that said, stick taps and sellies, boys. Clap it up. Clap it up, boys. And that broadcast. <laughs>